Order. Sonia, if you'll do roll call for us. Decker. Yes. Um, absent. McMurphy. Here. Olson. Here. Poe. Yep. Slater. Yes. Tucker. Yes. Looks like item two on our agenda is the reorganization of the board or election of officers. You want my two cents? Nope. Oh, yeah. Um, this is just a suggestion, but we have um, two members that will be going off the board in September, and that would be Slater and Loman. I would suggest you wait and reorganize after you have your new members. But in September, we are September. Well, um, in, the, in June, I mean, they'll be off in June of 2019. I would say I would wait till the end. But that's up to you guys. What I need is either a motion to do that or nominations. I'll make that. You'll make that motion. So I got a motion from the floor from Randy that we uh, move our uh, reorganization of our board election of officers to the June meeting, in which uh, there'll be two new members come on at that time. Second that. Discussion on that? I second. Okay. Roll call vote. Um, motion by McMurphy, second by Tucker. McMurphy? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Decker? Yes. Olson? Yes. Pope? Yes. Slater? Yes. Well, I guess that, you know, no need to turn over the gavel right yet then, is it? Item four is approval of our minutes of our June 13th uh, meeting, and those are attached in your board packets. I'd like a motion to approve those. I'll second that. Roll call vote. Motion by Poe, second by McMurphy. Poe? Yes. McMurphy? Yes. Decker? Yes. Olson? Yes. Slater? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Item five, uh, approval of the financials to date. Actually, there's financials as of August 31st. These are the end of our fiscal year. Our books are at the auditor. These are unaudited, but that is how we ended our fiscal year. Included in there is comparison, so you can see how that compares to previous years. And there's also an attachment on there to show what pledges and stuff. And I even included what we've collected thus far since September 1. Thank you, that's a lot of work. Um, it's good for you guys to know. Any questions? No one has any questions. I'll make, make a motion to approve. Got a motion from, from Randy to approve. I second that. Motion by McMurphy, second by Poe. McMurphy? Yes. Poe? Yes. Decker? Yes. Olson? Yes. Slater? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Our proposed meeting dates uh, you'll see attached, which is be March, June, September, and December. We traditionally meet, as you know, on a Tuesday. So you've got your calendar with you and you see any conflicts, this would be a good time, but uh, move, to approve. Okay. move to approve. And her second? Yeah. Randy second. Roll call vote. Motion by Olson. Second by McMurphy. Olson? Yes. McMurphy? Yes. Decker? Yes. Oh? Yes. Slater? Yes. Tucker? Yes. 
Number seven is approval of the uh, budget for FY18 and the. I didn't make any changes to the budget that we approved last year. You'll notice that it shows that we operate in a negative budget. Um, but if you'll notice that your financials, we were not negative. I kind of like to underestimate our income and overestimate our expenses. But if we need more money than I do, I just could point it. So that is, the, I mean, I didn't change anything. That's the same budget we had from last year. I don't foresee us having any increases. some application for infrastructure via that authority and through the ABORD authority uh, through various organizations, rural development and through the build program at the federal level. So cross your fingers and don't cross your eyes. Maybe we'll get some funding. I'm in the middle of making application now on another rural development one. So. And that stuff will flow through them to the various organizations. 
the Alliance, they have quarterly meetings. The next one coming up, I believe, um, is over the medical marijuana. And I believe I forwarded that information to you. If you didn't receive it, please let me know. Uh, let's go look and see if I can tell you what day it was. Because I don't have it. I didn't print it. It is October 16th at 11.30 at the Woodward Conference Center. And the speaker is Audrea Berry. She's Vice President of Government Affairs for the State Chamber of Oklahoma. The topic is medical marijuana in Oklahoma and what you need to know. So, and you can register for that through that email. Yes. We've got a speaker coming in here, I think in October, from an attorney's group speaking on that same topic. Same topic. Um, I'd have to get you the exact date, so I don't have my phone on me, but... You get me that, and I'll send you that to the group and as well. Law group, and then to tell you all the things you do and don't. I can, I will send that again out after this, so you don't have to hunt for it if you're interested in going. Number nine, so you got the NOAA one. Is there anything else from the Northwest Oklahoma Alliance other than that? No. Okay. I don't believe they've set a date yet for their reception. It's generally the end of March. Any information on the Usually we talk about infrastructure, tourism, that kind of stuff. So is there anything on that updates there? Other than the infrastructure money being solicited, I mean, what it, that I'm working on. Um, I, under announcements, I'd like to talk about what the gala and stuff that, that she's been working to put together. With. There's three organizations that we have put together. Last summer, several of us got together, and one of the, the difficulties we've encountered over the past several years with regard to the arts and culture um, statewide is the reduction, serious reduction in funding availability. And um, so at the national level, kind of a trend that, that is taking off in some regions of the country is the development of um, kind of a united way for the arts approach to fun funding development. So we're, uh, we put together a, a group um, here in Alva. It's comprised of Graceful Arts and Act One Theater and Northwest Concert Series. All three of those are uh, 501c3 nonprofits in good standing with the Secretary of State and um, formed the Alba Arts Alliance in our first, well, we're only doing one significant event a year and getting ready to do that Thursday, um, the Alba Arts Alliance inaugural um, gala gala, depending on where you're from, how you like to say it, I guess. Um, anyway, it's going to leverage um, substantial opportunity for us to go after uh, bigger dollars with our corporate partners. And uh, so we anticipate a, a good outcome this time, and, and then that will structure us in such a way that we can really take off come December. All of the, the folks I've talked to in terms of uh, the national philanthropic groups like for you to get the, the request in toward the end of the calendar year and then they consider those in their budget setting 
right after the first of the year. And uh, the other neat thing that has happened is uh, Freedom West did get its first NEA National Endowment for the Arts grant was awarded uh, last month, and so that's going to go at the courthouse. Uh, so anyway, uh, the Arts for Alive now. Something else is I went down to the Winnipeg Industrial Authority meeting and met with them, uh, and we had Todd Court come from Sealing. Um, working on trying to help them get a grocery store back in Good. there. So, uh, Tom and I are kind of working together and I've reached out to uh, Major County Economic Development as well. We're all working in the same book trying to help recruit for Winoka. That's good. Todd's a good guy. Yeah. Met with a couple of other companies. Um, I'm going to tell you they're ABARB related and oil well, and gas related in some way, shape, or form, and maybe possible solutions for problems in the oil and gas industry, boiling water, but nothing that we can go into at this time. Any updates on the wind on the um, south side of the, of the county? Last I knew, the project had received some bids to purchase that, which is the next step, if they've got to get a purchase for somebody to construct it. Uh, and honestly, I think they've received several, but I haven't heard if they accepted any of them. That was a couple weeks ago. Center, and you saw the other paper. We just we we were able to purchase a. It's called a FATS training machine, which FATS stands for Firearm Training Simulator. We had 12 people from our district in being trained how to operate it, but it's a. We can we can take a tour and show you. It's not not going right now, but it's three screens. It runs real life type scenarios for law enforcement training. So. Um, so it's simulated firearms training not only from, and they actually are able to utilize real service weapons. And so it's not a fake gun, it's got a CO2 cartridge that goes in, the barrel comes out, so it actually simulates the same recoil. Um, but um, so they could, you could actually do target scenarios along with real life scenarios of. Um, situations on using verbal commands and escalating scenes and things like that. So from an economic development standpoint where I think it fits into this group is it, it lends itself to a lot of opportunity to bring in outside people into the county and into our district from law enforcement, from uh, wildlife and, and uh, game wardens to sheriffs to local community PDs to OHP. So, Is that uh, you know, it, it's it's not a cleat, so the, the training that goes along with it will, they'll be able to get cleat credit from it. Okay. And so, um, the instructional side is, and uh, so that that's a neat opportunity. I know those folks that's been involved with that are way excited, so we're hopeful that, that will be an avenue to... What about, what about I see where these school districts are, are allowing their personnel to do that to, to carry arms will it be same type of thing you know a lot, a lot of it is it's just one cost and whether something as far as you know the actual firearm handling and uh, getting proficient with it they could do a lot of that pre-training here they'll still need to go out to the range but the other thing that they challenge with is you know, I took a, my concealed carry class and quickly discovered it's a perishable skill. And so um, this will allow them to come in and, and hone that and maintain it. And so if, if it was a school district that was looking at that, uh, maybe a great opportunity for them to come in and, and have staff that could go through that and maybe on a regular basis. For but there won't be any accreditation or anything no. with the <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it, it, you could use it for... Um, I don't, what I'm seeing now, it won't replace their official qualifications, and so that would have to be done probably with live ammunition at a range. But as far as um, 
update training and preparation and, and those type of things, it, it would definitely serve for that need. But uh, we're excited about that. It is right across the hall from Katie and his office. Mm -hmm. Like, right across the hall. <laughs> so if you hear, you know, get on the floor, you know, you're, you're, or put your hands We up. never know if it's a drill or... <laughs> Um, that's anything else? Anybody else got any other announcements? Woods County has been busy the last couple of weeks as far as rec or uh, tourism things. So, um, just from the local economy, there's a lot more movement, and you know, I think the oil fields picked up some just from a, that type of activity going on. So that's exciting. One thing I wish we had, and maybe it just takes a group action. Is uh, and so in the good old days, there was a way for visitors to the Little Sahara to have a tour without uh, owning your own vehicle. And uh, unfortunately, if you're not prepared, you you don't get to see the dune. It's just beautiful out yeah. there. I look at unique. I looked into that and talked to some local business people and asked about that because I see that as a private sector. If it's if it's something that's a true business opportunity, you know, it, they should be able to make money to accomplish that. And the folks that did do it did make money at the time, mm -hmm. but they they were dealing with a few complaints and if there's act, it just was not worth the liability associated exactly. with. But that so that but that's the where the state is the better uh, way to handle it. Yeah. I think the state has the same difficulties as financial and then also the liability side, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. But as I understand it, it's the most profitable part of the state. Yeah, I think you're right. We've had some groups that come in here, the Technology Center, that was from out of the part of our system, and we had lined up tours for them to go out and uh, with some private individuals that did that for me. And, and mm -hmm. the folks all across, they really enjoyed that. So yes. it, it is a, it is a, the opportunity. So. It's unique. And you know, and then there's the other set of dunes that are even maybe better dunes. Yeah. And uh, if, if we could have a little Sahara number two <laughs> down the river a little ways, and if, on your, if you're on 281 and look at the Cimarron River Bridge, if you look um, down the river, you'll see the other set. Yeah. That makes me think. I saw just in the last few days where Oklahoma had been awarded a pretty good hunk of money to the to their state parks. Oh, really? Oh, that's great. Huh? From the feds, I think. What agency? Huh? What agency? I don't know. I don't remember where it was. It's like one point four million. Out. <laughs> one point four million. It's like a teaser. Just throw it. Out. Well. It, it was. I read where it happened. Google. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On Facebook. Been just as passing out cash. <laughs> yeah. It went to the state park. <laughs> Never to be seen That's again. Really great news, you know. Potentially, we have a couple of nice ones here. Three in our area. It. it it had to happen in the last day or so, or okay. I wouldn't have remembered. I, I believe you. <laughs> Sonia, if you'll make a note, uh, Randy's supposed to get uh, case and information, so we'll call back up on that. <laughs> Anybody else got anything for the good of the group? If not, I'll take uh, a motion to adjourn. I'll give you one. And I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.